teaches you how to make that nice stroke, make a tight loop, get distance and accuracy out of your casting. Hi, I'm Louis Cahill from Gink and Gasoline, and today we're in the kitchen, and we're going to take a little time to shoot a video and teach you guys how to make the straight line practice setup. I had a video on the site a little while back about this, and it was very popular, and I sort of mistakenly said in that video that I thought they sold this on the Echo site, which I honestly thought they did, but it turns out they do not. And after a couple of hundred of you called um, the Echo offices, and um, there was some name calling on the post, and um, I decided, well, I got to make a video to show you how to make this thing. It's an invaluable tool. I've been using it at the Bonefish schools for a while now. And uh, last time I was down at Bears, I just left mine there. So I need another one anyway. And I'm going to show you how to make one. It's quick and easy. You can do it right here in your kitchen. I've got everything I need. I've got a piece of half inch PVC pipe from Home Depot. I have the uh, butt section to a broken fly rod. My buddy Tim Ray Jeff gave me. I have some five minute epoxy glue. I have uh, some toothpicks and a card to mix that up with, and I have two different sizes of ropes. So we'll see when we cut this open which one fits inside. Um, I also have a Dremel tool uh, to do my cutting with and some safety glasses because carbon fiber is nasty stuff, and trust me, you do not want splinters in your eye. So let's get to work and make you a straight line casting setup. Okay, the first thing I've done is to put down a piece of butcher's paper so that I don't uh, mess up my kitchen island. And I am going to cut the shaft of this butt section. I have a little piece of scrap plywood here just as a sacrifice block so that I don't cut into the countertop. And it's not really important where you cut this as long as you have you know enough to work with and uh, glue a piece of rope into. I'm going to just cut this about right in the middle. Now I'm going to use a Dremel tool for this. And uh, if you don't have a Dremel tool, that's fine. A hacksaw works really well for cutting graphite fly rods. Um, if you're really good, you can do it with a bead-headed woolly booger. Um, and I'm, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to make a cut right here. And again, I am wearing safety glasses because you can't be too careful. And I'm just going to roll the shaft of the fly rod a little here. And cut this all the way around. It is definitely throwing carbon fiber particles up towards my face. Those of you who follow the site regularly probably know that I'm in the middle of uh, eye surgery. I've had one eye done um, two weeks ago and I have another one done in a week. So I'm not at the place where I can really afford to get anything in my eye right now. There we go. Pretty simple. All right. We have a nice clean cut there. And you can see there's going to be just enough room inside that fly rod to glue in a piece of rope. I'm going to check real quick and see which one of these is best. And it looks like this bigger one will fit in there. Um, so that's great. I think I'm going to cut down just a hair more of this to have a slightly larger opening for that rope to go into. Because I'd like to have a nice tight fit for gluing. There we go. Probably being... Uh, more obsessive about that than I need to be, but that looks like it's going to work just fine. Yep, I can get that in there. All right, so that's done. That's good. We can set that aside for a minute. And we're going to take this piece of uh, nylon rope that I also got from the Home Depot. And uh, I'm going to grab some scissors real quick. And we're just going to cut off a hunk of that. And right now, that can stay long. It does not have to be real specific on the length of it. And I'm going to tie this right around the middle of my PVC. And you can use any knot you like for this. Um, you know, I'm going to use a clinch knot because why not? So I'll just cinch this guy down. Clinch knot is a little trickier and a big piece of rope, huh? I never tried that before. But the important thing is just that, you know, it's... There's not a lot of force on this when you use it, so it doesn't have to be, you know, super tight. You just don't want it to go anywhere. All right. That works pretty well. Now I'm going to cut the end of this off. And uh, just to keep everything in place and to keep that rope from fraying on me, I'm going to grab a lighter. There we go. And I'm just going to melt down the end of that 
and this will keep the rope from fraying and uh, should also make this end large enough that you know it acts as a kind of a jam knot to keep it from sliding back through if that knot should loosen up you know not a, not a big deal if the knot does loosen up we um there we go <laughs> fire we're gonna um put a little bit of glue on that knot at the end anyway so there we go now this we're going to cut and we're going to slide down inside the cutoff butt section of our rod. So it's time to mix up some glue. If I was a real professional, I would have, you know, practiced all of this ahead of time. And, but, you know, take what you can get. Here we go. Equal parts. Five minute epoxy. I'm just going to mix this really thoroughly. Now this stuff sets in five minutes, but it's not to full strength in five minutes. Um, takes really an hour, um, depending on what the temperature and humidity is like, um, for it to set up to full strength. But you want to make sure that it's nice and set before you start monkeying around with it too much. And I'm just going to take this toothpick and I'm just going to fill this up so there's enough epoxy in there to uh, get a grip on that rope as we slide it in. Probably probably way more than is really necessary. And if I get this started, this is going to be the tricky part. There we go. Ah, I thought I had it and I didn't. We have uh, we have a couple of minutes to sort this out. I get my head in between you and the camera there. That's good. All right, I'm gonna I'm gonna go for a clean start here. I'm gonna wipe my hands off with a piece of paper towel. Love it when things go perfectly on video, right? But, better that it happens here and you see it. So I'm going to cut that off and just to sort of help myself hopefully not make things more challenging than they need to be, I'm going to take a lighter and melt that casing there a little bit to try to keep that from scooching forward on me. Just be careful not to burn yourself doing this. There we go, that seems to be working a little bit better. Take another one of my toothpicks here and see if I can't ease this in. I could have made my life easier by using the smaller piece of rope, but I wanted a nice tight fit because I'm just being obsessive about glue joints, but that's working fine now. I've got a couple of inches of that rope inside there. That's plenty for the glue to grab. I'm just going to take a little bit of this glue while it's still workable. Put a little bit right here around the joint where that goes in. And I'm going to take a bit more and I'm just going to dab it all around this knot here to make sure that stays nice and tight. And again, this might be, you know, excessive, but this is my, uh, this is my chance to do it. So I'm going to do it. So it's just kind of like using uh, UV knot sense on your fishing knots, right? It's just a little, a little extra insurance. Now, if you get a bunch of, uh, epoxy places where you don't want it um, you can clean it up with a little acetone um, I don't think this is too bad make sure I haven't gotten any on the uh, on the cork grip everything looks pretty good we're gonna let that set uh, for just a little bit and then we'll come back and uh, see how we did 
Well, there you go. Our glue is set up and here's our spanking new straight line casting jig. Um, this thing is an invaluable tool for practice casting and will definitely teach you to stop dropping your rod tip and make nice, tight, clean loops. Um, this does not have to be the handle of a fly rod. If you don't have a broken fly rod hanging around to make this out of, and I totally get that, this could be anything. It could be a wooden dowel. It could be another piece of PVC pipe. Anything that has this flex flexible connection to your half inch PVC will work. Um, I think there's something to be said for the feel of the cork grip. So if you wanted to, you could go on Amazon and buy yourself an Eagle Claw fiberglass rod for 25 bucks. Cut it off and uh, you know make one of these out of it. And who knows, maybe you could even put another handle on what's left and give it to the kids. Um, but you just run a piece of rope between this, tie it off to two trees, and this will keep your casting in a nice straight line. Go back and watch the uh, video on how this works if you haven't seen it. And uh, get out and practice your casting, guys. This will make a huge difference. Thanks for tuning in and stay with us here at Ginkin Gasoline for more.